Hi, and welcome to MyMed Leads Communication Center training. In this tutorial, we'll be going over how to use the drag and drop email editor to construct email messages for your campaigns. To access the drag and drop email editor, navigate to the preferences page and click on the communication builder link. This will take you to your message library. From here, click on the add email button at the top of the page. You will then be prompted to give the email a name to make it easier to identify it by your internal staff. Make sure the name is descriptive enough so that when choosing messages in your campaign builder, it is clear exactly what and who the email is for. For instance, LiPo Procedure Marketing Email 1. Recipients cannot see this name. The subject, however, is seen by your recipients. This is the subject line that will appear in their inbox, so make sure it's something interesting or relevant. After all, your emails are no good if they don't get opened. However, they should also be somewhat brief. Try to keep your subject line to 50 characters or fewer if you can. Once you have entered a name and a subject line for your email, click Save. This will then direct you to the actual email editor to create your email. Creating the structure of your email is easy. At the top, you will see a toolbar containing elements that you can use in your email design. To add an element, simply drag and drop it at the desired place in your template. Elements can be added after each other or one inside another. We'll start with dragging out the full width element. As the name suggests, the full width element fills the email window horizontally, while its height adjusts to its content. This is a root level element, meaning it cannot be added inside any other element. It's simpler to imagine this element as a row. Next, we'll drag out the box element, which we will nest within the full width element. The box is a container element for your content. It can contain one or more elements. The box element provides responsive capability to your email template as it adjusts the viewing window and sets the contained element size accordingly. The most eye-catching parts of your template will probably be images. MyMed Leads does not host images at this time. In order to have images appear in your email messages, you will first need to host them on a server that is available to the internet. There are a number of free image hosting sites that you can use for this, but if you can, we recommend uploading images to your own server via FTP. This gives you more control over the file name structure and the URL that you will use to reference the image. If you have a WordPress site, you can also upload and host your images here. Once you have the URL to your hosted image, it's time to link it into your media library. Double click on the camera icon to open up your media library. Click on the image from URL tab. This is where you will paste the link to your hosted image. Once you have pasted the link, click the add URL button and the image will become available in your media library. Click the Insert button to add the image into your email. After placing an image into the template, click on it to set its properties. Right below the preview, you can add a link to the image. Because images are visually strong, it is a good practice to use them as links. Below, you will see other properties you can manage for the image. By default, the image will fill the horizontal space available and adjust its height accordingly to keep the image ratio. The space available will be defined by the container element of the image. In this case, our image is within a box. To access that box and edit its properties, you'll need to refer to the breadcrumb navigation here at the top of the editor. This allows you to see what element you're currently editing and enables you to quickly and easily jump to other elements you wish to make changes to. For instance, even though this image is 600 pixels wide, I can see the container element is only allowing it to fill a maximum of 590 pixels. If we jump to the box element that the image is nested in, we see why. 5 pixels of padding has automatically been applied to all sides of the container box. To quickly zero out the padding on all sides, simply click the central padding button, change one side, hit enter, and all padding gets reduced to zero. Now, if we click back into the image element, we're able to size the image all the way up to the full width of 600 pixels. Other properties available for images include the alignment property, left, center, or to the right. You're also able to add margin and padding to an individual image. Down here, you can add borders to one or all sides of an image. To add a border to only one side, simply deselect the side you do not wish to apply the border to. Next, we'll add some text to our email. Use the breadcrumb navigation at the top of the editor to select the container element you wish to place your text into. Now, drag the text element into your template. 
We want our text to have a white background. So to do this, we'll need to select the box container element and set the background color to white here. To activate the text editor, double click on the text element. This will bring up the text editor menu. If you have pre-prepared text, you can go ahead and paste that in here. Using the text editor menu, you can do some simple formatting of your text, much like you would in a word processor. Using this menu, you can also add links to your text. Over here on the right, under Typography, you'll see a number of options for globally formatting your text. For instance, I can change the color of hyperlinks to better match my branding color scheme. I can also use this menu to change the style of the font and heading titles, as well as the line spacing. For titles, you'll want to use the H1 title element. This can be styled to your liking using the same menu options we use to style our text. Next, we'll take a look at the column element. This element allows you to divide text, images, and other elements horizontally. You can add up to five columns to a column set. You can also add columns within columns. You can control the number and size of your columns in the right-hand menu. You set the width of the columns and pixels according to the desktop view. In doing this, the columns also get a relative width and percent. This allows the columns to properly adjust their size when viewed in different devices and email clients. To independently edit the spacing around elements like a multi-column, it's useful to remember the box element. Dragging a new box into our current box, then moving our columns into that box, allows greater control over the look of the element within our existing design. All marketing emails you send must include an unsubscribe link. The text you use can be something simple like click here to unsubscribe or to manage email preferences. To insert the unsubscribe link, you will need to highlight the text, click the hyperlink button from the editor, choose Other from the protocol drop-down menu, then type in pound pound unsubscribe URL pound pound. Uppercase or lowercase is fine. If you already know who the sender of the email will be, you can go ahead and select the user from the Signature to Use drop-down menu. This is the user the email will show as sent from, and if the lead replies to the email, the email will be sent to that user's inbox. However, the sender can be overwritten in the Campaign Builder as well, if you're not yet sure who the sender will be. Once you have completed your email template, click Save. Then, navigate back to the email to send a test message to see how the email will look to your recipients. Enter your email address at the bottom of the page and click the Send Test Email button. Navigate to your email inbox where you will now be able to preview how your email will look. It is a good idea to check the email on any mobile devices you have as well. Within the preview email, you can also click on your unsubscribe link to test that the variable was put in correctly and is working. You can also preview your email by navigating back to the message library, locating the email title, and clicking the Click to See link in the description column. This will take you to a page where you can view a quick preview on the left of how your email should appear on most desktops. And on the right, you can preview how the email will look on mobile devices. Before we move on to the Campaign Builder, let's take a look at the Complex Element first to see how this feature can help us create future emails even faster. The Complex Element allows you to group entire sections of your email template together and save them as a reusable element which can be added to your future emails. This is a handy feature for things like headers and footers that you plan to use in all of your emails. You can also save an entire template. This is useful if you're creating procedure marketing campaigns where the template will look more or less the same in all emails. It can take a bit of tweaking to save an entire template, but typically building out the email template first and then moving all elements into one container box at the end is the best way to accomplish this. Using the breadcrumb navigation at the top of the editor is the best way to manage these elements. Using my template, I have now created three separate liposuction procedure marketing campaigns. Let's say we wanted to also include a text message in the campaign to remind the lead about the 10% discount that was offered in the third email. Text messages are created from the Communication Builder page as well. This time, we'll click the Add Text button at the top. 
Just like we did for the emails, we'll give the text message a name for identification in the campaign builder. We'll go ahead and type out the text message, reminding the lead of the special offer. Try to keep your text messages as brief as possible with a call to action. In this case, calling the office to schedule a consultation. Now that we have our messages created, it's time to move on to the campaign builder to create our first procedure marketing campaign. Before doing that though, you'll want to make sure the master switch for email marketing campaigns is turned on. You can check this by navigating to the preferences page, clicking on patient communications, and toggling email campaigns to on if it isn't already. Then click save. The campaign builder can also be found on the preferences page under communications. The MyMed Leads Campaign Builder is broken up into a four-step wizard. On the left-hand side, you'll see the various types of campaigns you can create. We'll go ahead and give our Procedure Marketing Campaign a name, and then select Procedure Marketing from the Campaign Type drop-down menu. It is important to make sure you select the correct campaign type here. Click Save to move on to Step 2, selecting your audience. Since we only want to target leads interested in liposuction, this is the only procedure we'll select under Procedure. You can select multiple procedures. For instance, if I had created a more inclusive campaign for body contouring that covered multiple procedures and treatments, for instance, tumescent liposuction, smart lipo, cool sculpting, and so on, I could select all body contouring procedures on this page, and if a lead is interested in any of these procedures, they will receive the body contouring campaign. You will typically want to select all for lead sources for your procedure marketing campaigns. However, depending on the size of your practice, you may wish to create separate campaigns for different doctors or for different locations. This can be configured at the bottom, where all physicians and locations will be shown to choose from. In this case, we only have one doctor and one location, so we'll go ahead and check All and click Save. This takes you to Step 3, where you will actually begin to build out the campaign sequence. On the left, you will see the different communication types you can include in your campaign. We have already created the necessary emails and text messages for this particular campaign. Adding an outbound call to your campaign sequence will send a reminder notification to the assigned rep to call the lead. We'll go ahead and drag an email tile out onto the canvas as our first communication. A pop-up will appear for you to select the appropriate email and timeline. In this case, we want the email to go out one day after the lead is posted in order to give staff time to contact the lead. So, we'll go ahead and set this using the drop-down menus. If we leave Send from Assigned Rep toggled to Yes, then the email will be sent from the rep that was assigned to the email when we were building it. However, you can have the email go out from a different rep by selecting No, and then selecting the rep from the drop-down menu you wish to use. Click on the drop-down menu next to Select Message in order to choose the first email in the series. Clicking the icon to the right will show you a preview of the email. Click Save when you are done. We will continue this process until we have our full campaign built out. The steps for adding a text message to your campaign are the same as building an email, minus the assigned rep. Adding an outbound call reminder is simple, as you only need to select how long after the last message to place the call. When you are done, click Save, and this will take you to the fourth and final step to test and activate the campaign. Enter your email and phone number in the form fields on the left, and click Test Campaign. It will usually take several minutes for you to receive all messages from the campaign, including emails, text messages, and outbound call reminders. Once you have had a chance to review the campaign and are satisfied, it's time to activate the campaign. This can be done simply by clicking the Activate Campaign button on the left. If you navigate back to Step 1, Campaign Details, you will see here that the liposuction campaign is now active, indicated by the green check mark you see here. Once you have activated your campaign, please note that it can take up to 8 hours for the system to begin evaluating your existing leads for this campaign. Newly introduced leads will be evaluated normally and can be placed within the campaign within minutes of posting to MyMed leads. Once the campaign is activated, the system will begin evaluating existing leads to see if they qualify for the recently activated campaign. In the campaign we just created, our first communication is scheduled to send 24 hours after a lead has been posted. 
MyMed Leads will look at your existing leads, and in this case, if over 24 hours has passed since a lead was posted, that lead will technically be considered expired for the first message in this campaign. The system will then move on to the next message in the sequence. In this case, the email scheduled for four days after the last message. If the lead is qualified, meaning they fall within this timeline of the past five days, they will receive the second message in the campaign. For a more in-depth look at how the system evaluates and qualifies leads for a campaign, head over to mymedleads.net and click on Marketing Campaigns at the bottom of the page for more detailed documentation.